the general problem faced when trying to route packets and networks is how do we find the lowest cost path between every possible pair of nodes in the network? One popular general purpose algorithm for finding the shortest path between nodes in a graph, which is what a network is, is Dijkstra's algorithm. Now, to this point, we've been using simple graphs with one edge connecting each node. But in the fully general case, we'll be looking at a network with directed links going in each direction. In particular, these numbers along the link edges are the cost of traversing that link, and the cost in one direction may be different from the cost in the other direction. So this cost represents some sort of notion of network congestion, the length, just an abstract notion of how long it takes to reach one node from another if you're going in a particular direction. So given a directed graph like this, how do we find the shortest path from one node to each other node? Dijkstra's algorithm solves the problem like this. At a high level, we're going to start from some particular source. In this example, I'll be starting from V7. And we're going to build up a set of vertices such that each vertex we add to our set is the one that is closest to V7 along the paths we've currently traversed. You can visualize the steps of this algorithm by using a table like the following. This table will help us figure out the shortest path from V7 to each other node in the network. T is a set of vertices which we have already checked. L1 is our current estimate of the length of the shortest path to vertex 1. Next to that we will store what that path actually is. Notice that we have the lengths and paths to vertex 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, but we exclude the length to vertex 7 because that is our starting point. If we've been starting from a different vertex, for example 3, then this column would have been excluded and the length to vertex 7 would have appeared at the end of the table. Because we are starting from vertex 7, the first vertex in our set is 7. And what we do is look at this network and figure out how many nodes are one step away from vertex 7. So from vertex 7, we can reach V4 with a single hop, and the cost of that hop is 1. So under V4, the length of the path will be 1, and the path itself will be 7 going to 4. Similarly, going to V3, one hop has a cost of 2. So under 3, we'll put a 2. And the path is 7-3. And going to 6, the cost is 5. And the path itself is 7-6. Now, we cannot reach any of these other vertices with a single hop, so we will leave those columns blank for now. And that is how we complete the first row of this table. Now, to continue, we have to add another vertex to the set T. The one we add is whichever one is closest in terms of these costs on the links. So between 5, 1, and 2, the closest is 4. So we will add vertex 4 to our set T. And then we will figure out which nodes are one hop away from either 7 or 4. In fact, we can depict how this um, expands 
by tracking the neurons in our set like so. We have seven to start, and then we've gone out along this branch to encompass four as well. So any path that we add will either come off of seven directly or will come off of four via this connection from seven. So adding vertex four does not allow us to reach any vertices, any vertices that we couldn't reach before, but we can reach vertex six for a lower cost. The cost here is one, the cost from four to six is one, therefore the overall cost of this path is less than the original path we had directly from seven to six, so we will update that cost. So going to six, a cost of two, seven, four, six. Something else worth noting is that when we add vertex four to our set, that means that the path to vertex four is guaranteed to be the shortest. We've locked that path in as the shortest, so in my table, I'm going to simply draw an arrow down here indicating that we know what the shortest path is already going to that vertex. However, we do not know for certain yet that we've discovered the shortest path to vertex 3, so I'm going to rewrite this same cost and path in the table to keep track. Now given the network in its current state, we want to figure out what the next lowest cost node we can reach is. We could go to vertex three for a cost of two, but we could also go to vertex six for a cost of one, two. So we have a tie to break. Strictly speaking, it does not matter how we break ties. The algorithm will find the shortest paths regardless of how we break the ties, but if we wanted to make our algorithm more deterministic and less random, we could instantiate a rule and say, for example, that if there's a tie, we will favor the route with fewer hops. That means that we'll go from seven to three instead of going from seven to four to six because there's two hops versus one. So the next vertex we'll add to our set T is three. And note that the path we're taking to reach three is the following. So we are now going to consider which nodes vertex three gives us access to that we did not have before. For example, we can now reach vertex one within one hop of vertex three. So we can add a path here where the cost is gonna be seven plus two for a total of nine and the path is 7, 3, 1. We can also reach vertex 2 now, and that cost is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Because we added 3 to our set, that means that the 3 column is locked in, it is known. We still can't reach vertex 5, and our cost of vertex 6 has not changed. Moving on, we want to find the next node to add to our set, and so we consider what we can reach within one hop of what we've already seen. Of course, I mentioned previously that going to three was how we broke a tie between three and six. So clearly six will be the next vertex we add since it's tied in distance. And now we consider what we can reach from vertex six. The best route to vertex one has not changed, but the best route to vertex five is now via six. We go from having no available route to having a route that goes seven, four, six, five for a cost of one, two, three, four. We also receive a better route to vertex two. So even though we had a route with only two hops via vertex three, the cost of that was five. The route through vertexes four and six is cheaper, one, two, three. So we will add that next. The last thing to do in this row is to note that because we've added vertex six, the route to vertex six is locked in and no longer needs to be changed, thus completing this row.
the next vertex to add is vertex 2 because we can reach it in from vertex 7 with a cost of 1, 2, 3. So we will add vertex 2 as the next step and we will reassess all of our paths to get the following row on the table. Note that the path to vertex 2 is now locked in because that is the vertex we just added to our set. The path to vertex 5 did not change, but the path to vertex 1 did change because now instead of the costly route via vertex 3, we can take a route with more hops but a lower overall cost through vertices 4, 6, and 2. So the cost of that route is 5, it goes 7, 4, 6, 2, 1. The next vertex to add is vertex 5, and that will be via this route through 4 and 6. So we'll add that in, because the route to vertex 5 is 1, 2, 3, 4. So having just added 5 to our set, we can now lock down this column and the only path potentially left to recalculate is the cost to vertex 1. However, even though we have a new route available, it is not a lower cost route. This route has a cost of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, which is more than the route of cost 5 that we already have. That means we're done with this row, and there's really only one vertex left, so we do need to add that, and for completeness, we add it along the route we're using to reach it, so we get there from vertex 2. So we'll encompass vertex 1, and we've now reached all nodes in this network. We lock down this column, and put the final vertex in our set T. And that is the last row. And each of these paths is the shortest path from vertex 7 to each of these other vertices. Now, given all of this information, vertex 7, assuming it's a router, can create a routing table in which it only needs to know what the immediate next vertex to send its packets to is. So there's more information here than the router actually needs to route its packets, but it would use this information to determine how to fill out its routing table. A lot of this information gets discarded at the end as no longer necessary once it's set up. Now, although this is a nice general purpose algorithm, it ends up requiring a lot of information that you typically don't have in networks. Every single vertex in this network, or every single router, let's say, in this network, has to have complete information about the network. Each of these routers or nodes needs to know the connectivity and the costs of this whole network. That information generally is not available in particular because it can constantly change and shift. So we need an alternative algorithm for determining the shortest path that doesn't require as much information.